Hello everyone, Ryan here, and today we will jump right into P7 Online. It's new, it's something that we've never done before, but I'm excited for it, and you should be too. So let's get straight into it. Today's lesson is called Meant to be Regifted, which pretty much just means what it says. You're meant to be regifted in life, so let's not jump into it. According to a 2012 survey, more than 60% of its participants plan to regift the present they had received that holiday season, and 87% believe they had been recipients of a regifted item. We usually don't appreciate the thought of someone re-gifting something we gave them since, you know, we gave it to them and, you know, we, we think it's special and it should be special to them. And if they re-gift it, then it kind of hurts because, you know, our pride gets hurt because, you know, we gave it to them. We want them to enjoy. But God has given us a present this year that he expects us to re-gift. The best things in life aren't usually wrapped in a package. Go around the group and have each member using one word or only. Name something God has blessed them with. So you can put that in the comments. Something that God's blessed you with. One word only. See what see the various responses of people. I'm kind of interested to see. So jumping straight in. It was between the years six and four BC. Simeon, a righteous godly man, wanted nothing more in life than to see the Messiah, the one who would provide redemption for his people, the Israelites. To Simeon's delight, the Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah with his own eyes. So he was going to see the Messiah. He was going to look and see him with his own eyes. That's self-explanatory. One day, Simeon finally knew it was time. Under the lean of the Spirit, he went to the temple courts. That very day, Mary and Joseph brought baby Jesus to be presented in the temple for a purification ceremony. Deeply moved, Simeon took the baby in his arms. Lord, you can now let me go to my grace, grave in peace. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have made visible to all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. What that is saying is that Simeon saw baby Jesus, since Mary and Joseph brought him to the, the temple to be for the, um, the purification ceremony, and he knew right away it was the Messiah. And he, he prayed to God, God, Lord, you can take me away. You can, take, you can let me die. So he knew that was the Messiah, and he knew he was going to see with his own eyes before he died. And that's how he knew that he was ready, that he could die whenever now, because he'd seen the Messiah. Before then, he did not think that he was ready to die, because he had not seen the Messiah with his own eyes. Jesus, God in human form, had come to earth. And it was the best Christmas gift ever. See Luke 2, 25 to 32. Instead of having you guys have to go look that up and read it, I'm going to read it for you. I will pull up. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ, see the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took he up took he him up in his arms, and blessed God, and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou have pre has prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people of Israel. This is pretty much just restating what I just read, that he received, you know, he received un because of the Holy Ghost. He knew that he was going to see the Messiah before he died. And once he saw him, he knew who it was. That's very interesting because, you know, some people, like, it's just, they seem to struggle to find God. And, you know, I understand it, but, you know, if you're looking, you're looking for him and you know that you can find him, you'll find him. He'll come to you. You don't have to, you just have to read your Bible, pray. He'll come to you. So I think that's very interesting. I think this is a very interesting passage of scripture because Simeon put forth the effort. He knew when it was time to go to the temple. I find that interesting because, you know, it's, some people will say it's like a coincidence, but it's really not. It's just, he knew by the Lord's grace and by the Lord's like, just because, you know, he, the Lord showed him where to go, when to go there. And I think that's very cool. I think that's something that, you know, that happens, that still happens now. So, so jumping into how this relates to us, from the beginning of time, Christmas was in the mind of God. So you know Christmas, you know, the baby Jesus is born, you know, it's such a celebration. So let's jump into it. Revelation 13a refers to the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. 
We know this lamb was Jesus because John 1.29 in the English Standard Version calls Jesus the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Which that relates to he took away the sin of the world. He gave us a chance to be saved because of the fact that he died on the cross for us. Which is about to be Easter. We're, very, we're getting close to Easter. And you know the death and the resurrection. It was a great thing. It's the reason that we have a chance to be saved. So you know it's a good thing. It's great that you know we're jumping into this. Before the very first let there be of creation, God knew that Jesus would one day go to the cross so our sins could be forgiven permanently. That's something that's really hard to understand for us humans, that God knows whatever, everything that's going to happen all the time, all the time, ever. He knows what's going to happen. And it's kind of hard for us to understand because we can't map our minds around it because we can't do that. I find that very interesting that, you know, he can know everything. He's greater than us. And, you know, if you can't accept that, then you might as well accept it because it's the truth. But let's jump right back into it. Until Jesus' death and resurrection, God's people sacrificed lambs and ceremonies that temporarily pardoned their sins. That's how it was back in the Old Testament before Jesus died for our sins. They didn't have anything that, like, to, they didn't have what we have to, you know, for forgiveness of sins. So they had to sacrifice the lambs and lay them out on the altars as a sacrifice to God to take away their sins for temporarily. They had to continue to do that in, until Jesus died on the cross, took away our sins. Before he could ever redeem a single sin, however, Jesus had to be born as a man. He had to become one of us. He had to be human. And in the miracle of Jesus' birth, God gave us the most meaningful Christmas gift we could ever know. It's crazy how he was born because he was born from a virgin. And that doesn't happen. That does not normally happen. Unless, you know, there's ways it can happen now. But, you know, the way it happened, he just got, you know, Mary just got impregnated with Jesus without having, you know, with being a virgin. And, you know, she took flag for that because, you know, people didn't believe her. Because why would you? If someone got pregnant in your school and you say, and people were making fun of her and she says, I'm a virgin, not many people are going to believe her. So let's just continue. I don't want to dive that deep into it, but you guys get what I'm saying. So, have you ever ached for someone who was suffering? Hebrews 4 15. Well, you can come in here. All right. Have you ever ached for someone who was suffering? Hebrews 4.15 says that in the same way, Jesus can empathize with us. That he, he has experienced pain and temptations as we have. You know what you go through on a daily basis? You know how, you know, all your life is so hard, you know. You go through all this stuff. Jesus went through the same exact stuff. And he was the only perfect person that ever walked the earth. He didn't make a mistake. I'm not saying that to, like, bring us down. I'm just saying it that, you know, you can get through this. You can get through these hard times because you have, you know, Jesus there. He's a, an example for you. You know, he went through the stuff that we go through and he got through it without making a mistake. And I'm not saying we're not going to make mistakes. Don't take, don't take my words and misuse them. But we can get through stuff just like Jesus did. That's interesting. That's very interesting to think about that. You know, he went through everything that we have, we go through. The pain, the temptation, you know. You feel like you're struggling with something. You feel like you're struggling with, I don't even know what you could begin, but he went through it. And that's very, it's very useful. As you endure some of life's hardest issues, you can be confident that even though, even through the pain, God understands and relates to your struggle, which makes sense because he went through it like I just stated. It's been said that the best way to send an idea from one nation to another is to wrap it up in a person. At Christmas, the idea of sacrificial love was wrapped up in the man, Jesus, and sent to the earth. So the love of sacrifice. He sacrificed his life very young. He was 33 years old. And he sacrificed his life so that we could be saved forever. So that people forever could be saved. That's very... That's... Has anyone else ever done that? I don't think so. I mean, people have sacrificed themselves for other people. That's very true. But to sacrifice yourself for an entire race, you know, for an entire human race, where people are going to be bad still. There's no guarantee that people are going to be saved. They have to put forth the effort. And Jesus is not a forceful God. He wants to see that you want to do it yourself. Which is very, you know, that's, you know, so there is still bad in the world. But, you know, Jesus still died for them. People get it twisted. He didn't just die for the good. He also died for the bad. He died for everyone. That's very interesting. These are God's gifts to you this Christmas. Salvation, love, joy, hope, and peace. 
well, it's not even Christmas season, but I guess I, you know, with the, with the lack of being there, we kind of fell behind. But, you know, just think about it. Think about Christmas for a second. He gave himself, you know, himself as a human, knowing that he was going to be sacrificed for our sins. Would you want to go through that? Through the pain of being whipped and all that. I'm not saying that we're going to have it. But so many people would just say no. No. But Jesus knew he had to do it. This, for people to be saved. That's very, it's very interesting. I know I say that a lot. But, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it is what it is. It is interesting. It really is. The good news, you can re-gift these blessings, and you're expected to, and share them with everyone around you, all while enjoying them yourself. If you believe you are saved, if you are saved, and you do not share the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ, it's what we have to do. It's, you know, you should have a burden for it, because you know, it, you know it's what we should do. If we have the good in us, we want to share it with other people, so that they will also have the good, that we can create a big world of good now does everyone do that no and is it is it hard sometimes yes but you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do just realize he put us here for a reason to spread good that's really all i have for today i'll probably release lessons twice a week maybe it won't be a set schedule probably but we you have time leave in the comments what you want when you want me to release the lessons I'll release them then. But thank you for watching. Um, I hope that you got something out today. How Simeon knew that he had to see the Lord before he died. That's very interesting. Because, you know, he knew where he was going to be. The Lord showed him. But thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. And God bless. Just stay safe, everyone. And keep reading your Bibles and praying. We'll get through this together. And hopefully I'll see all of you guys again one day soon. Thank you. Have a nice day.